guys and welcome back to another Chemistry Academy video. Today we're going to be looking at the oxidation of alcohols and aldehydes and ketones, part of Unit 2 of the Higher Chemistry course. So to get started we'll look at the different types of alcohol you can get. So you would have learned at National 5, if you did National 5, that alcohols characteristically contain the hydroxyl functional group. So if you see a molecule with an OH hydroxyl group in it, then you could class that molecule as being an alcohol. So that's the functional group that you get within an alcohol, which is a type of molecule. So I've got three different alcohols here. Um, I've got butan 1 all and that's called that because it's got four carbons in the longest chain and the hydroxyl group is on carbon one. So that's butan 1 all this one is butan 2 all because again it's four carbons in the longest carbon chain and the functional group this time though is on the second carbon. And then this one over here is 2 methyl propan 2 all because the longest chain of carbons contains three, so that's prop. The hydroxyl group's on carbon 2, so that gives you the 2 all. And then we've also got this methyl, one carbon methyl branch in the middle carbon. Uh, also carbon 2 which gives you the 2 methyl part. So we've got three alcohols here. They are all what we would call isomers. So they're all molecules with the same molecular formula. They're made up of the same numbers of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens, but they all have different structures. So we call them isomers. They all have the same molecular mass because they're isomers which means they'll all have the same number of electrons, which means they'll all have the straight, same strength of LDFs. So if you were looking to compare the strength of hydrogen bonding based on where the functional group is here, then they would be good molecules to compare because they've all got, they're all gonna have the same strength of the LDFs because they've got the same numbers of electrons. So what is the actual difference in terms of the types of alcohols they are? So butan one all is a primary alcohol so what that means is that the functional group is on a carbon that's bonded to only one other carbon. So this hydroxyl group's on this carbon, which is only bonded to this one carbon. Butan 2 all that's what we would class as a secondary alcohol. So this is where the functional group's on a carbon that's bonded to two other carbons. And then tertiary, one over here, is where the hydroxyl group's on a carbon that's attached to three other carbons. So that's what primary, secondary and tertiary means. It's how many carbons is the carbon that the functional group's on attached to. So it's not how many carbons is the functional group attached to, it's how many carbons is that carbon that the functional group is attached to. Attached to. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. But if you phrase it this way, it's less of a mouthful. So the functional group is on a carbon that's a bonded to however many other carbons. Primary means one, secondary means two, and tertiary means three. Okay, so when it comes to looking for primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols, um, rather than having a full structural formula, sometimes you'll just be presented with the name or the shortened structural formula. So I'm going to give you a couple tips to quickly identify what they are based on these two things. So if you get an alcohol that's a one all, that automatically makes it primary. It can't be anything other than primary if the number for the hydroxyl group location is a 1. So even if it's got branches, if it's 1 all at the end, that means it's primary. Um, for the short structural formula, you'll see the OH at the end of a chain. If For the secondary, if the number for the hydroxyl group is higher than 1, so it's like 2, 3, 4, whatever, and there's no branch on that same carbon, then that's when it would be secondary. So if the hydroxyl group number is not a 1, and there's no branch, on the same carbon, then that would be secondary. Similarly, for the short structural formula, we'd be looking for the OH to be in a bracket somewhere in the middle of the chain, but with no branch attached to it. For the tertiary, you're looking for the hydroxyl number and the branch number to be exactly the same. So if they, those two numbers are the same, that means it's tertiary. And within a short structural formula, you would have two brackets. So you'd have a CH3 in a bracket and an OH in a bracket, meaning they were both branches on the same carbon. So that's just a couple tips for quickly identifying if something's primary, tertiary, secondary or tertiary from the name and then also the short instruction formula. Okay, so now we're going to look at the oxidation of these alcohols, the different types of alcohols. So 
There are a few oxidising agents you'll need to remember the names of, but I'll do them after we actually go through what happens to the alcohols when they are oxidised. So if you remember back to unit one, red, when you did about red ox, oxidation uh, is where you can either gain oxygen or lose hydrogen when it comes to non-metal based molecules. So that's what we're kind of looking at here. Uh, it's still the same thing. And then the oxidizing agents we tend to use for alcohols and then aldehydes and ketones when we go into them. And there's specific ones that are generally accepted for that. So I'll go through them afterwards. So we start off with the primary alcohol. So what happens is where the hydroxyl group or the carbon that had the hydroxyl group and that's the bit that reacts because that's the functional group. I've just put um, this little O in square brackets as a sign that it's going to be oxidation that's happening. So when you oxidise a primary alcohol, what happens is this hydroxyl group turns into what we call a carbonyl group. So the rest of the molecule stays the same, so you'll still have three carbons, but instead of having an OH here, you end up with a double bonded oxygen and then an H goes on the end. Okay, so that makes a carbonyl functional group. So the hydroxyl group turns into a carbonyl and this molecule here is what we would call an aldehyde. So that's another homologous series that we will talk a bit about more in, in a minute. So we've got an aldehyde. This can then be oxidised even further so you can actually oxidise these again and the aldehyde or carbonyl group turns into a carboxyl group which produces you a carboxylic acid. Okay, so that's the oxidation sort of pathway if you like for a primary alcohol. Okay, so it goes from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde then to a carboxylic acid. And in terms of the functional groups, you've got the hydroxyl group here. Then this is a carbonyl. Then this is your carbonyl group. And then this would be a carboxyl group. Okay, so try not to get confused, carbonyl and carboxyl. The carboxyl has a hydroxyl on it as well as the carbonyl, so it's like a word of carbonyl and hydroxyl. It's like, I don't know if you guys would be too young to know Brangelina, Brad, and Angelina Jolie, Brangelina. That's basically what we did when they named the carboxyl group. They took a carbonyl and hydroxyl and just put it together. Okay, so that's the three functional groups that we go through. If we I start off with a secondary alcohol for the oxidation where again where the hydroxyl group was becomes a carbonyl again so we've still got these three carbons and then the carbonyl goes there there's now no bonds for this hydrogen uh, for there to be a hydrogen here anymore because carbon can only make four bonds so that carbonyl is just that and then this would be what we call a ketone Okay, so these are the two new homologous series that we learned about in this topic, the aldehydes and the ketones. So they are very similar because they both have carbonyl groups, so they both are known as carbonyl compounds, um, but they are different molecules. And the reason for that is because in an aldehyde, the carbonyl is on the end of a carbon chain, whereas in a ketone, it's in the middle of a carbon chain. Okay, so that's the difference between them. But... Other than that, they are essentially the same, so they would be isomers, molecules with the same molecular formula, but a different structure. So if you have an aldehyde and a ketone with the same number of carbons, they will be isomers, okay? because they're always going to have a different structure, because the carbonyl is in a different place. If we then look at the tertiary alcohol, so the tertiary alcohol you can't actually oxidise, because it, there's no free hydrogen on the carbon with the hydroxyl group. So in order to oxidise alcohols, you need to have a hydrogen, also what we know as a free hydrogen, attached to the carbon your hydroxyl group's on. So for these two alcohols here, there are free hydrogens on the carbon that the hydroxyl's attached to, but for the tertiary alcohol, 
there's not. So you can't actually oxidise them. So if we actually look at what's happening molecularly to the molecules when they are going through these oxidations, so when the primary alcohol goes to the aldehyde, what's happening is you're losing two hydrogens. So that would be minus H2, which means the mass of the molecule will go down by two because two hydrogens weigh two, weighs two grams. In this case, though, when the aldehyde is going to the carboxylic acid, what's happening is an oxygen is being added in. So that means you're basically adding half a mole of oxygen. So the mass would be going up by 16. Okay, so for this one, it would be minus two grams. For this one, it's plus 16 grams because the one, mass of one oxygen atom would be 16. For the secondary alcohol going to the ketone, you're losing again two hydrogens. These two come off and the double bond gets formed. So for this one, it'd be a loss of hydrogen as the sign of oxidation and the mass of the molecule go down by two grams. Okay, so sometimes you can be asked about how the masses change. Again, for the tertiary alcohol, you can't oxidize it, so there would be no change. So now we're gonna look at the oxidizing agents that are used to carry out the reactions we've just looked at. So for alcohols, the ones that are generally used are hot copper two oxide and acidified dichromate, which can also sometimes be called acidified, acidified potassium dichromate solution. So hot copper two oxide is a solid. So normally you'll see it in a diagram in a sideways test tube and the substance passes over it. And as the substance passes over the hot copper two oxide, it, the substance is oxidized. When it's oxidized, the hot copper two oxide turns from a black color that originally starts off as to a brick red orange. So that's because copper is being produced, which has that brick red orange color. Acidified dichromate solution, um, you would normally have in a test tube with the, or a boiling tube with the substance you're oxidizing. And that color change goes from orange to green, or you can say orange to blue green. Don't say orange to blue though, because that's not accepted. So that's the two that are generally used for alcohols. Remember, that's just for primary and secondary because you can't oxidize a tertiary alcohol. Then for the aldehydes, you've got these two, feeling solution and Tollens reagent. So these are both liquids again. A feeling solution goes from blue to brick red or orange. And then Tollens reagent goes from being colorless to producing what we call a silver mirror leaves a layer of silver on the test tube. And that's because silver metal is produced in the reaction. Okay. Ketones, again, can't be oxidized, so they won't react with any of these oxidizing agents either. Which means that if you have two substances and you're trying to decide which one's a ketone, which is an aldehyde, you can actually use these as a chemical test. Um, so you can use these reagents to find out if you're you've got a primary alcohol, a secondary alcohol, a tertiary alcohol, or an aldehyde or a ketone. So you can find out which one of all of those five you have by using these oxidations, uh, oxidizing agents. So for example, if you've got a primary alcohol and you react it with one of the oxidizing agents that we use for alcohols, generally it'll be this one. If you produce a substance that will turn pH indicator red, that means you've produced a carboxylic acid. And the only thing you can oxidize to produce a carboxylic acid would be an aldehyde or a primary alcohol. So by oxidizing the substance you have and finding out it's produced a carboxylic acid, that tells you you've either got an aldehyde or a primary alcohol. If you have a secondary alcohol, it would react with either of these oxidizing agents, so you would see a colour change, but it wouldn't turn pH indicator red because you've not produced an acid, you'll just have produced a ketone. So you'll still get a colour change, so you'll still see that an oxidation's happened, but you won't turn pH indicator red with the thing you make. For a tertiary alcohol, you wouldn't, again, it wouldn't react with these, so you would get no colour change. So if you did try to react, a tertiary alcohol with either of these, they would just stay black or they would just stay orange. Same if you're trying to decide between an aldehyde and a ketone, you can use these two. So the aldehyde will give the colour change with these reagents because it can be oxidised. The ketone won't. So you just end up with the feeling solution staying blue 
or the tolerance reagent being extend colourless, you wouldn't see a silver mirror. Sometimes you'll get a question where there's like a two-stage oxidation, so you take up a substance and oxidise it, and then the product of that oxidation, you try and oxidise it again. So if you take a substance, oxidise it once, and then you can't oxidise that thing again, that means you must have had a secondary alcohol, because if you think, mind, look back to what we looked at before with the reactions, the secondary alcohol can be oxidised once to a ketone, but then you can't oxidise the ketone any further. So <clears throat> we're quickly going to finish off by having a look at this um, stage process again for the oxidations. So like I said, depending on how many times you can oxidise the substance, you can work out what it is with any of those oxidising agents that we had on the other, um, just before on the board. So seeing a colour change is an indication an oxidation has happened. Not seeing a colour change means the oxidation hasn't happened. So you've got primary alcohol can be oxidised to an aldehyde, which can then be further oxidised to a carboxylic acid, so that can go through two stages. The secondary alcohol can be oxidised once to a ketone, and then the ketone can't be oxidised any further because there's no free hydrogen on the carbon anymore. And then the tertiary alcohol you can't oxidise at all because it doesn't have a free hydrogen on the carbon containing the hydroxyl group either. Okay. One thing to bear in mind that's not talked about too much is that the reverse of all these reactions is a reduction. So if you go from a carboxylic acid to an aldehyde, that's a reduction reaction. If you go from an aldehyde to a primary alcohol, it's a reduction reaction. A ketone to a secondary alcohol, a reduction reaction. Okay, so the reverse of all of these stages of oxidation is just the stages of reduction. So sometimes you will be asked to identify a reduction reaction for these carbon-based compounds and you are really just going backwards. So I hope that was helpful in terms of oxidi oxidation steps and then also what the common oxidising agents are for these molecules. I will do a separate video on aldehydes and ketones, looking at them in more detail in terms of naming them, etc. Because I feel like that's a, probably enough for this one. So thanks guys, if you found this helpful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe.